so we want to look at uh, the, the 116th division of Psalms. <laughs> Psalms 116. Uh, and uh, the lesson uh, title uh, for this morning is Keep Your Relationship with God Simple. Uh, and that's a simple title for a simple lesson. Um, and the objective is simplicity, I guess. <laughs> So that's uh, 116, and uh, we were at uh, uh, the past praise and worship on Wednesday, and uh, the scripture was read, and when it was read, it just resonated, you know, with, with me. I've obviously, I mean, I've, I mean I've, I've read the scripture before and I've seen it, but when it was read, it was just like, it was, it was just one of those moments where you just kind of like a moment of clarity, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, as life continues to go become more and more fast paced in the world we live in and everything uh it's so important that that with christianity and with god as as the scripture says you have to keep the lord sanctified in our heart he's separate he's special he's holy he's set apart you know what i mean he's set apart from everything else that we got going on in the sense of that like we live life and we in business and we do all the different things that we're trying to do but our relationship with god is eternal all these other stuff is temporary. It's going to have an end. You know what I mean? Our life is going to have an end. Our relations that we have on this earth are going to have an end. Everything on this side of time, life is temporary. But God is eternal. It's forever. There is no time frame on the relationship you have with God. And so, and so when, I, when I was just thinking about that, and that's kind of the thought process that I always try to maintain in my mind is that God is separate from everything else that I have. Not that God's not involved in everything else, but God is separate. He's sanctified. He's set apart. He's above everything else that I got going on. And so I, I kind of, I keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, with that being said, uh, Psalms 116, the first verse was just key to me. It was just so powerful because it's so simple. You know, David says, I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplications because he had inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious the Lord and righteous, yea, our Lord is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return to thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. And, you know, and so, looking at just those verse 7, it, when you read that scripture, and sometimes the Bible can be very poetic, uh, you have the old English feel to it, that it, it has this, you know, flow to it. Sometimes you got to look at how the words are being used, and you have to kind of really kind of think about the message of what, what the scriptures are saying, you know. And But when you look at these scriptures, they're so simple and so easy to be understood. You know what I mean? Sometimes you think about, why should I love God? And a person may come up with a whole lesson on, why I should love God. And you look at different examples in the Bible about God doing this and God doing that and what his wonderful works. You know, but here here in, in this song with David, it's a simple thing. He says, I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplications. And that's such a simple, simple concept. But when you think about that, like that is the basis of any relationship. It's just, it's, it's trust. You know, and he just says, I love God because when I'm in trouble, he hear me and he help me. And when you, I like to say, and like, and like that to me is just so it to me is just like for that moment especially it was just so profound because we can think of so many things that why God is good you know what I mean we can we can we can build it up with that he has done his marvelous works that he has done and he has let he's he's led a nation out of out of out of bondage I got said he led a nation out of bondage through dry ground through through a through a, through a sea and he has uh, created the world in seven days and all the things therein and he has rescued his people and he has done you know you can and you can go down a whole list of marvelous things that he's done but simply put David said I love God because he heard my he heard me you know he cared about me and like of all those things that is just that's the basis and that's the simplicity that you should have and you should approach your relationship with God with is that at the end of the day like God hear me when I speak. He care about me. He care about what I think and how I feel. When I'm in trouble, he's there to help me. You know, when when you, as a child, and I'm coming your way soon, as a child, you know, 
you don't know your daddy your parents may be something great in the world but you don't know none of that all you know is that you cry for hunt for food and they give you food like if you scared you run in their room and they pick you up and they hold you or they cold they, they they hug you or they comfort you you don't know anything else about all the great things that they've done they may have done some marvelous things in the world but to you they just mom and dad you know what i mean and so and that's the simplicity that i'm talking about as far as our relationship with god like with God, it's just that man. He loved. He loved me. He cared about me. When I'm in trouble, I need something, or something's going on. Like God is there to help me. He's there to rescue. He's there to comfort. You know, He cared about me. He cared about what's going on in my life. And that's the simple term, the simple ways that we should approach our relationship with God. All the all the wonderful works are important. Don't get me wrong. You need to learn about all that God has done. Because having the proper fear for God, having the awe that you're supposed to have for God, His power and His might. All those things are important, but when you're just talking about the bare bones, simplicity of your relationship with God, because it's a personal thing, it's simply put that God care about me. He loves me, you know? Um, so it's a call. Uh, uh, thank you for this lesson. Amen. And uh, speaking of God's, uh, the simplicity and loving God. You know, when I look at this scripture, 11, 116 and 1, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. And it's addressing the needs, the needs that we have. We need the Lord in every facet of our life. But you know, when you're speaking of simplicity, what came to me is I love God because he first loved me. God loved me enough to, and all of us, enough to send his best and that's why it's so important that in our walk, we are Christians 24-7. I know you weren't meaning this, but God, we love God, but God is not over there and then everything else over here. And I think you kind of tied that together just in case. We are to be Christians 24-7. And how we show our love for God is that we obey his commandments. Amen. That's how we show our love. Amen. But God did everything for us before we were even a thought. Amen. Before Amen. He loved us so to down the through the generations, it was already appointed that we would be Christian. But the obedience is because we obeyed His word, and that's why it's so important that we realize who we are and whose we are, and the integrity of our walk because we are living epistles that's what the scripture said to be read by men and how some some the only christ they may see is the christ in us and i just wanted you speaking of simplicity uh, amen you know uh that's, that's exactly what Jesus says in John 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, and that too is simple. It is not, and, and when you, when, and I got a couple of scriptures I want to go to, but if I don't get anything else across in this lesson, it's just that it's, the, it's breaking down the relationship with God in the simplest of terms and in the simplest of ways and mentality. You know, because a lot of times we, we, we complicate our relationship with God. We complicate our relationship with people, period. You know, we start putting uh, different markers and different, different uh, goal posts and different things that you try to measure love by, or measure friendship by, or measure relationship by. But, and, and especially with God, because there's so much that's attributed to God in the world with people saying this about God and that about God. And, you reading the scriptures about God and all these different things and the expectations and the goals that people set as far as being a Christian, all this kind of stuff. But when you read this scripture and you bring it right back to like, Sister Carl always says something she's like, you know, going to heaven is personal. And that's true. You know what I mean? That's true. At the end of the day, it's simply, you know, when you read this and David wrote, or David wrote this 116, and it's multiple chapters written about David. Second Samuel is pretty much all about David's life, you know? And he spills over into a couple other books. You know, we're talking about just talking about David's life, how much did he accomplish, what he did, what he messed up on. It's it's multiple chapters, and it's multiple chapters written about David. But when you read this, and that's one thing that I always find, 
not not necessarily fascinating, but just like it's interesting, and it, and it, it brings that back to my remembrance. Is that the great? No matter how great things that David accomplished, you talking about with the most with the most uh, popular thing, his most popular story or feat was his, the, his defeat of Goliath. You know, people use that that aren't even, that aren't even Christians. They talk about, you know, you got to defeat the Goliath in your life and all those kind of stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, use his reference. <laughs> you know, and people marvel at that story, and it's it, it's a marvelous story. I mean, it's it's when you look at it from just a just a plain situation like it's it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy story you know what i mean i don't know if i want to go into it now but <laughs> it's it's crazy and that outcome of that was not the way it's supposed to go i mean when you look at all the all the attributes involved with two people that's going against each other david shouldn't have won that fight it's only because of god that he won that battle i mean straight up it is, it is what it is but anyway but when you look at that, of all the things that David accomplished and all the things that are written about David, David says simply, I love the, God, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. You know what I mean? And so not because he, because I stood before the giant and looked him in the eye and I took his sword and with his power, I was able to slay the giant and, you know, bring freedom to Israel and blah, blah, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? It's. I love the Lord because he heard my voice. That's Amen. it. And that's, 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 that's personal and that's quiet and that's simple. You know what I mean? And that's the mentality that we have to have. It's no matter how great things that we accomplish in, in, in Christianity or in life or whatever, we can't look at those things and say, okay, oh, that's the reason why. No, it's because cause, cause God, he see me and he care about me. And when I'm, and I'm in trouble, you know what I mean? Like, I know he got my back. Or what are terms ever way you want to say it? Like, that's the way I talk. But like, God, he 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 hears me when I speak to him. We have a relationship. You know, and sometimes, and I want, I want to start trying to get into some more stuff. You know, sometimes we get we get big, and this is the reason why I said what I said at the beginning. Because, because, because in this life, all of us walk different paths. You see what I'm saying? All of us accomplish different things. You know, some you may have a saint, and you may have a saint like the, like the Bible talks about. Um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. It's slipping my mind. He's a he's a, he's a he's a captain of the centurions. Matthew, I can't remember exactly what chapter it is. He comes to God. He says, "I'm a man of authority." Yes. He says, "I tell people to go there, and they do it." You know what I mean? I tell them to bring this and they, they bring it. But then he's coming to God, but he's coming to Christ humbly. You know? And, and the reason why I'm saying it is because in, the, in this world, you may be someone of renown. And that comes with a certain amount of responsibility and a certain amount of power. You may be a CEO, and as a CEO, you gotta, tell, you gotta make decisions. You gotta tell people, hey, you, you go here, you, you go there. Tell that guy he's fired. And, and justifiably so it ain't about just ain't about I'm just trying to be a lord over people it's like that's your job your job is to tell people he's gone cut him cut this expense that means that 10,000 people job will get laid off that's your job as the ruler you gotta say or as a CEO as the boss whatever and people gonna come to you and be like oh Mr. Mr. Johnson we, we Johnson because one of the most common names <laughs> I know, we, we have a Johnson or not yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but and you have to understand that's your job you like the buck stops with you you make the decisions you tell people what to do they do it that's that's your role as a king you have to un, you have you rule a nation like legitimately like people's lives are in your hands you do what you see best as far as in that land people people lose their lives based on your decisions and that's just what it is. Like, land has to be taken. Sometimes everybody not gonna always like your decisions, but you gotta be strong and understand that, hey, this is what we gotta do to make this thing happen. And it don't matter about how people feel about it. Sometimes just, this is what's best and this is what we gonna do and that's just it. But when you come back to God, I'm still just a child. I can't, you can't be a child in mind as a CEO. You gotta be a boss. Amen. You gotta run things. That's that's what you that's what you do. And you can do it humbly, of course. You keep up even mind blah blah. But at the end of the day, what you what you say is goes, and that's just what it is. But when you come to God, 
I'm a child. Amen. And I need God. I, 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 I'm prostrate before him. Point blank, period. And, and so, so that's what I mean. That's what I, that's, what I, that's what I was thinking about when I'm talking about God is sanctified in my mind. I can't come before God like I'm the CEO of this major Fortune 500 company. Da 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 da. And this is how you know. Hey, you know, I need to talk to you, God. Like you talk to other people. No, you may talk to other people like that, and it may be necessary because you have to. You have to show that I'm in charge. But at the end of the day, when you come before God, I'm always the child. He's always the father. I need, he. I need him. He don't need me. All that I accomplish in this world don't mean jack when it comes to. <clears throat> the father because he's bigger than me he's better than me and he know everything I don't know nothing you know what I mean and so God is God is like I said the relationship that you have with God is simple it's easy if you if you maintain that understanding like I said a, a father and his child like I said you 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 may well come I got you you may accomplish great things in the world, but when you come before your parent, they just, they your parent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't come in the house telling your mom and daddy what to do. Mm -hmm. You may, at your job, or at your, at your company, you tell people what to do. But when you come in your mom and daddy house, hey mama, hey dad, it's what it is. And if you understand that, you understand how special that relationship is, then you understand that. They are different. They are not like the people that I work with at my job. When I come home, I'm different. I'm somebody else. I don't run around and boss my children around like my employees. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have to understand that relationship. And the same concept with God. All the and I say all those relationships are temporary. They gonna people gonna die. You gonna die. And when you go to heaven or the you know the life after this, ain't no bosses, ain't no brothers and sisters in the sense of relationship that we have on earth. Ain't no husbands and wives. Ain't no children. It's just God is the Father. We are the children. And that's it. That's forever, it, and that relationship lasts forever. It ain't no changing in that in that hierarchy. So in that sense, that's all I'm saying. It's separate. It's sanctified. It's different than what we, the lives that we live here. And you have to understand that when you go before God, that this relationship that I have with God is not like others. It's different. It's sanctified. It's holy. It's set apart. And so, and and you have to. And so, if you understand, if you understand that in its simplest terms. God don't need me, but God loves me, and God can see me. God don't see us as, like, collective. He does in the sense of that he understands his people. But even in that, God understands each individual. He sees each individual person also. And he has a, he has a relationship with each individual person. I know you. You should know me. And our relationship is based on me and you not me and everybody else. And like I said, and in those simple things, like, man, I love God, man, because he, cause he loves me, and he cares about me, and he hears me. You know, uh, I'm going to try to move forward in the lesson. <laughs> just a quick comment. No, 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 I, just, I just want to say, even uh, using the very key, uh, David, <clears throat> God said David was a man after his own heart. And we know how in the beginning God was, uh, David was a non king. And then we know that David sinned and he fell for grace. But he, and he had a decision to make when Samuel said, thou art the man. And then what did he do? He took and he humbled himself in the sight of God. And David is, uh, he is infamy. He's down in the history, the annals of time. We'll, we'll uh, be learning and studying David until I believe Jesus comes back. But it let, it <clears throat> let you know that uh, he was upright he sinned, and that's what the Bible says, for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But what he had was godly sorrow. And because of that, because first of all, to think, oh, he purposely had a man killed just to hide what he had done. And then he wanted the wife, to, the husband to go lay with the wife to hide the sin that he had done. Mm -hmm. But when Samuel told him, thou art the man, mm -hmm. he repented of that. And then the integrity of his, like you said, we're all have our different paths. And we're about, when going to heaven is real personal, 
But I think of the scripture too, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Amen. Because that's what it's about each other. We, we want to be roaring and cheering each other on because a Christian that does not love, the greatest is to love God. And then the second is to love one another. You're not worth the assault if you don't have love, if you don't love. And you've got to love one another and you've got to forgive one another too. When they repent, Amen. because that's that's the essence of who God is, and and you know, like you said, talking about uh, God's love in its simplicity, it's just really very easy. You know, when you sin, you take and you fix it, but you can't walk with God and and the world too. You can't do that. You can't hold on hands with God and then hold hands with Satan. You know what David did? He let go. He let go of that hand that he was holding when he took it. He wanted to have him killed and hide this and do all that. Because actually, we know as scholars of the Bible that he shouldn't have even been able to be up there at that time looking across the on the rooftop and see Bathsheba. He, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he let sin overtake him. So that's why the Bible says, be careful. Be careful in case you think you're so strong. Lean not to your own understanding. But And we're still talking about, you know, in reference with the lesson. But uh, thank you for this lesson. Thank you. God bless you. Look at uh, uh, 2 Kings chapter 5. And uh, this is, a, uh, I don't want to say common story, but it's a story that's, that's uh, studied often most people are familiar with the story of Naaman and um, when I when I look at this when I look at this story especially in light of the lesson you know a lot of us take the mentality of Naaman in life and in and in our relationship with God we, we, we try to make things complex you know what I mean we make we make the situation bigger than make it we, we build up we build things up to this unnecessary level when it's not really like that it's a simple thing I was just to point out. You know, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's simple. I mean, like, you don't have to, you ain't got to try to add all this extra fanfare to it and, make, and all this color to make to make my relationship with God worth something. It's a, it's a simple thing, you know. And so, um, <clears throat> I'll read the lesson. <laughs> now, now, Naaman, captain of the host of the kingdom of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So this is what I'm talking about. So Naaman is a great man. You know what I mean? Like he he's a he's a man of honor. People respect him. That's just what it is. He makes decisions. He got he has a lot of clout in the world. That's just what it is. But he's a leper. He got an issue. You know what I mean? Uh, verse two. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when the letter is come up unto thee, behold, I have I have therewith sent name of my servant to thee, that thou may recover recover him of his leprosy. Now, like I said, it's it's really it's really important, especially in light of the lesson, the point that I'm making, and understanding the this point in this in, in this text. Uh, uh, name it as a captive, you know what I mean? But he but he's a respected man. So much so that the king of Syria when, he, when they hear about this story about he has a leper, he has a problem. They can't, nobody can't even fix the problem, but they still respect this man. He, he go out, he got leprosy, but he'll still go out and go to war. That's right. And he'll, and he'll put a man in the dirt. You know what I mean? And he's a captain over many men. Of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, he's a captain over soldiers. They go out, he tell them, hey man, you go flank this way, you do this, you do that, blah, blah, blah. And they come back victorious. You, you have to, it's so, it's so important. And I try to make sure that you get these things so you understand the that understand that the gravity of everything he has men's lives in his hands mm -hmm. he makes decisions people follow those decisions and they come home to their wives and children you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so when you're a good captain people have the utmost respect for you because you bring me home safe you know what i mean 
Like it's, it's bigger than just ah, we go out with swords, ching 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 ching, ah, and then we go home and everybody scream. Like these are real people too. Even though they're Syrians, they they have wives and children. They like to go home too. So this man, and he and he's a respect. He's an honorable man. He's a good man. He treats people with respect. He 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 a good guy. People people love this dude so much so, like I said, that the king of Syria. It's just a simple thing. And Israel, some Israelites get captured. She is now waiting, waiting with his wife. Say, man, and so she, and she cared enough about him. Say, man, I wish that he was in Samaria because it's a, it's a, it's a prophet that now that could heal him. So even though she's a servant in his house, he's carrying himself in a way to where she got respect for him. She likes Naaman so much so that she wants to see him healed. You see what I'm saying? Even though she's a slave in his house, that gives, that shows you the character that Naaman has. And so, so much so, like I said, that the king just hear about it. It's one of the servants here. Hey, man. Uh, they say it's a guy down in Samaria that can heal leprosy. Oh, it's not really. So the king said, okay, I'll write this letter to the king of Israel. Hey, man, listen, I'm going to send my servant out here. I want to see him get healed. I mean, that's just where it is. And then they take, you take these massive coffers of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 10 talents of silver. That's a lot of silver. 10, 10, you know, 6,000 pieces. That's a lot of gold. You know, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of stuff they got to get together and send down here with this man, with this one guy. His one servant, and say, "Hey, man, heal him for a, a, a leprosy." You know, this is this is some big situation, but that it, but it goes to show you how powerful and how respected Naaman is. That's, right. That's the point that I'm trying to make. You see what I'm saying? And so, uh, uh, and he brought the letter. He says, "We want to recover him of leprosy." Okay, verse six, verse seven. It came to pass when the king of Israel had heard, read the letter that he rent his clothes and said. I, am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man doth send me unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So the king of Israel gets the letter. He like recover this man of leprosy. Like man, you cats don't just get healed from leprosy. You know what I mean? This is this ain't no. Oh man, we got some herbs in the back. Yeah, we got it. Like this ain't the kind of situation. And so he he saying he sending all his letters. He sending this stuff. Like, hey man, heal him. He like man. Obviously he want to fight. You know, Brother Oza did a wonderful job of teaching, you know, a nation was sent, sent out an a, a ambassador before with a letter or a message or something, hey man, this is what's going on. If you kill the ambassador or you do any kind of harm, then that's basically like a slap. That's what you've done to the nation that sent him. And they're going to come and it's, it's going to be game on in your life. You know what I mean? If you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't honor the request of the king by the ambassador, he takes that as a personal offense, and here we come. We finna, we finna get down. That's just what it is. So when he comes and says, "Hey, I want you to heal my servant of leprosy," he's like, "We can't heal nobody of leprosy." So when the letter goes back, we can't do that. Okay, but then here we come, because I told you to do something, you didn't do it. It's a personal offense. We come to take care of our business. <laughs> so that's what he saying. So that's what the king of Israel is thinking. The king of Syria just want to come and have war. That's all he wants. So he's gonna come give me, ask me some outrageous thing, and I when I return back, we can't get it done. Then here they come and they they finna come, you know. That's right. Tad a club up as they say. <laughs> so and it's sad because he don't even know that there's a prophet. He don't even believe in God or the prophets of God and he ain't aware that there's a prophet in the land that can do this. And it's sad how disconnected he is from you know, from God and his people. Anyway. Verse eight and and, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Or not uh, Abana and uh, uh, far par the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel may I not wash in them and be clean so he turned and went away in a rage and so once again Naaman's a good guy he's like he's highly respected all that kind of jazz he comes in and he's and he's used to being treated a certain way you know what I mean and so he comes he come down to Israel it's a prophet they, they told him there's a prophet in the land, but they sent a letter to the king. The king like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with this. So then listen, heard about what happened. Hey, man, tell him to come to my house. I got it. They're going to know there's a prophet in Israel, a prophet of God. Okay. And he come down to his house. He literally didn't come outside. He sent a messenger outside. Hey, man, listen, go dip in the water. 
You know what I mean? And Naaman is upset. Because he's like, yo, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm somebody. You know what I mean? Like, ah, you know what I mean? We got, I got all this stuff coming up in here with me. Like, I got a hand really about a king to your king. You know what I mean? Talking about some stuff. Talking about dipping this dirty water. There's some clean water on me. Like, I can't go dip in this water. He upset. He said he, he left in a rage. He was upset. And, and a lot of times, we, even as Christians, take on this mentality. And we have to be careful not to. Amen. That you that you that you start putting like uh, you start putting measuring blocks like like measuring marks mm-hmm. on God and His love and His proof of His love for you and stuff like Amen. that. Your relationship with God starts getting complicated because you start expecting God to do these things and that stuff, and you expect to see this kind of stuff happen. And all this kind of stuff. And, it, and it's a multiplicity of reasons why that happens. Because you get caught up in praying for stuff that you want. You get caught up in hearing the, the noise from the world and what they say God going to do and what God can do. And so you, so you start thinking like, you know, God don't have to do this, but he can do this. You know what I mean? You want to try to prove to God that who God is and that God is so great. So you want God to show people how great he is. So you start you want to say, you want to see God show some stuff to like validate, and, and like I said, it, the list is endless on reason why. But you have to be careful not to do that, and keep your relationship with God simple, man. God care about me, He love me. I'm His child. That has to be enough. Amen. You know what I mean? He's my father. That has to be enough. And you like you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta try to show or. You, you, you have to get away from that mentality. I ain't gonna, you got to get away from that mentality when you start trying to put these measuring sticks on God. You know what I mean? In your relationship with God. And like if God ain't doing this, that, and a third for you or things ain't going the way you think it should go, that like God don't really love me like I thought or whatever. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, that, you know, this, 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 this concept, like I said, you have to be very careful about it. Amen. So anyway, Naaman went away. Uh, he was upset. That's it. <laughs> and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? And how much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? And so that's what he said. Like, man, you know, if he had told, told, you, told you to do some type of outrageous thing, then you would have been cool with that. And he's like, Now he just told you to do some simple thing. You can't go do that. And that goes to show you his mentality. He, he, he wanted some fanfare, something like something big a big event because hey man leprosy finna get healed like this when some stuff should be happening right now and it's like nah man because that's not what it's about don't remember what you came down here for you came down here to get healed he just told you how to go do it so now what's the problem you see what i'm saying we we pray for god we pray to god about different things and we say man just give me strength you know to give me strength to do do, do right i just want to do right inside god i want to be as right you know what i mean and you have simple opportunities to do right but you want something big you want so you want to be able to prove yourself, prove your Christianity, prove your righteousness, whatever, before God and man. You know what I mean? It's like, it ain't, that ain't necessary. All I need you to do is just be obedient. All I need you to do is just be sincere. Like, if you, if you say you love me, be sincere about that. You know what I mean? Like, if I want to know more, then just study. And study with a sincere heart to just know more about God. A lot of times, and, and this happens a lot with, with, with leaders preachers, people that teach Bible class, stuff like that. You start off, and I remember, and this is just a personal thing, I remember when I first obeyed the gospel, like, like I remember the moment I wanted to get baptized. I went to Bible class, like a non, it was like a new, uh, new convert class, you know? And I had grew up in a church, I grew up around a church my whole life, but I never really paid attention in Bible class like that. <laughs> I, just, I was just up in there, you know what I mean? But I was, uh, I'm like 18, I went to the class, and uh, somebody told me, you should go to the class. All right, I go, and I was reading, and the brother was teaching, and it was it was just blew my mind. It was like, the stuff that he's saying is actually in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it blew my mind, like, I, it was just crazy. Like, it says it right there. Why do people think the other way if it says it right here, you know what I mean? And then like, I went home and I looked at it some more. And the next one, I was ready, I was excited, you know what I mean? Took notes, went back and looked, it's there, you know what I mean? And from there, it was just like a rocket, man. I was just, I couldn't get enough, you know what I mean? I just, cause I just wanted to know. Man. I just wanted to learn, like, cause it's in this. The book is so thick; it has so much information. Like, 
it says all this stuff. You know what I mean? And we, me and Lelson, going to Bible class almost every day of the week. This person have a Bible class. This church was having a Bible class over there. We heard some other having Bible class in their house. We was in there like five to seven days a week. We was in, well, probably six, literally six days a week. We were somewhere studying because like, we just just wanted it. You know what I mean? I'm coming away, my brother. But then something happens. Something happens where it's your pursuit for knowledge goes from just I just want to know to I want to know so I can tell people, or I want to know so I can prove this point, or I want to know so I can teach this lesson. I want to know so that I can, and then it it, it it gets away from the simplicity of just, I just want to know truth. I just want to know what God, I just want to right. know what he said to like having some other al alternative al ulterior motive. And that's when the stuff you got to be careful of. When you read the scriptures, you read it to believe it. I read it because, and I, I, read, what I, I read what it says, and I believe what it says. And I just want to know truth. I just want to know right. You know, I just want to be right in my mind so that I don't want to be right in the sight of God. That's it. That's a simple thing. But when you start trying to be like, because I got to try to like, you know what I mean? Because I want to, because you like to try to debate. You like to try to have discussion with people and then bring out scriptures because I'm right. You know what I mean? And that's cool. You got to stop the miles of the game saying, I'm not saying that. But like, it becomes a personal motive and a personal agenda. Whereas like, I want to know so that I can dominate others. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's not where it's at. That's, and, and, and that's just, a, that's just a small example, but like you have to keep your relationship with God pure Amen. and simple. You know what I mean? Cause that's, that's how it's, that's what it is. It don't matter how much you learn, how much you know, you give the information because you're just trying to help people. It's a simple thing. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes helping people is stopping their mouth. Sometimes you gotta rebuke somebody. Sometimes you admonish people. That's what it is. But even in that, it's simple and it's pure right. in everything that you do. It's not for no personal glory or because I wanna I wanna show that God is some great thing or whatever. Because God don't need that. God, God is gonna be God. God gonna be great regardless of what anybody else That's think right. about Him. It's for the person's benefit to know who, that God is great. It don't benefit God no way. Like, cause I'm gonna be great anyway. If no, if none of you cats believed in me, I'm still gonna be great. And I'm gonna show y'all great I am at the judgment. <laughs> and I just want to be like, it don't matter if you can't believe it. And and we have to understand that God don't have to prove himself to nobody. You know what I mean? And in, and and in turn, we don't have to prove ourselves to anybody. In a sense of like, all that we have to do is be faithful. All we have to do is be righteous. And that God see that we righteous, because our relationship and our and our desire is to be pleasing in His sight, mm -hmm. and everybody else gonna see what they need to see anyway. That's how you keep things simple, uh, brother. Henson. Um, did. Mike, I just wanted to tell them that no, that no is right there. So some electricians working over there. Oh, okay. They don't. They're not aware we're in here. So. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I need to Thank you, thing. brother. I heard. I heard not one bump or anything. <laughs> so, uh, locked in. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Thank you for what you just said, because that's what it's about. It's about your own personal walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people will take and accuse you, and it could be unjustly, but always remember, you don't want to consciously make your decision, but you don't want consciously to cause your brother to stumble. Mm -hmm. and he follow in your footsteps, but he take it a step further. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, when I look at Titus 2, and understand people, we, we all know this, people, it, 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 it's about being sincere and pure, mm -hmm. and it's about actually loving the person. I, I, I uh, think about when you were speaking, you, you made it personal, you went to yourself. Mm -hmm. I remember when we came here, uh, the location on Wilson, I think it was 2005. And I, I, I was thinking about, you all were there already, and you were a young couple. And you were, you were, you were, you had a zeal. You seem, you, you seem to be uh, hungry and thirst after righteousness. Not saying that you don't do it now, but I was just remembering back. And I remember how faithful, you know, you all were and the zeal that you, and that's what God wants us to continue. Using you as an example, as you used yourself, that's how God wants us to continue throughout 
And when we sin, we know we, you know, the Bible said for all of sin, we repent of that sin. That's how simple and serious it is. It's just so simple. But I, I wanted to read this scripture here. Just read the scripture, Titus 2. And, 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 and uh, Brother Hamilton, I love that how you said it. it's not about proving your point. Because you don't have a point. You know why? Because you didn't die for me. It's that simple. We talk about simple, right? It's just that simple. God died, but it's the love that we have for God. When we have the love for God, then we are going to be concerned about our brothers and sisters. But when you look at Titus 2, this is what it says, and I know most of us. It says, Titus 2 and 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly. We should be serious because we are peculiar people. What makes us peculiar is we don't do the things that the world do. Like you were giving the example of a job. We might be a CEO on a job, but even being a CEO on a job, we are to remember who we are and whose we are. And when we make decisions, make them righteously. Make decisions not based on uh, because I can do this. But, you know, uh, it says we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us. That's pure love. Amen. That is pure, unadulterated love. <laughs> From all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And even in your rebuking, you got to rebuke with long suffering and love. That's what the scriptures say. But speak truth. Because you know what? This person, uh, whomever, could come further down the line and say, you know, I wish someone would have told me that. And that's what, that's what the scripture, it, it's, it's like you said, when you love a person and you love them in its, in its simplicity and you see them, because it may be what you're thinking, you, it could be wrong. It could be, you know, and that's why. It's just like too, I believe that in, uh, from the scriptures and I've read about a confidence. When we come to one another and we still talk about simplicity, but when we come to one another, I think brother Ozan uh, in his sermon this morning, it ought to be someone that you can come to and have the confidence that I have a concern. And this concern is not, I'm not doing it based on, I'm not saying it bothers me, it's bothering me. It's not about gossip or anything. Cause some come with, to you with gossip. And, you, and if you are a discerner of the truth, you can tell the difference between the two. And then that's when you, are, you, you know, gently rebuke them and you know, and say, well, have you approached that person? Or have you, you know, if you, if you, and then some, you come like the house of Chloe. Remember when he came to, uh, came to uh, Paul? Uh -huh. I know, because I know you're a Bible scholar, but I'm just saying, but just, if we understand going to that, that's why I think it's such a good lesson. Amen. Be sincere. You, you're talking about simplicity. Just be pure. Just be real with yourself. Examine yourself. And, and, and that's what it's about. But I wanted to share that scripture in conjunction with what you said. And I pray I'm not talking too much. Man, no man. Keep your relationship with God simple. Uh, look at Deuteronomy chapter 5. And this is one of my... People are like, what's your favorite scripture in the Bible? I'll be like, hey, your favorite, you know. But I guess this is one I'm, I'm partial to just because of just because of the simplicity of it. And the, you know, it's such a simple concept. I, I, I always try to think as simple as possible. Uh, Deuteronomy 529, uh, God says, Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And <clears throat> like 
that, like I said, I, like every time I read the scripture, it just it it just resonates with me because a, a lot of times this is I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be as simple as possible because pe people and I, now I'll, I'll say even sp include Christians and I'll even go specifically with Christians because people have different backgrounds and people come from different places even in the church like all of us come from different families and different mentalities and whatever and people bring that stuff with them into Christianity whether it be the doctrine that you some of the doctrine that you learn from other religions or the the instructions or uh, traditions you receive from your parents or whatever different mentalities you develop along with from coaches and blah 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 whatever and people think about God in different ways like their mentality toward God is different each person you know what i mean and like there are you know the, the you, you look at the scriptures and the scriptures should should you should be surrendering your mind and your thoughts and your feelings and like discarding that and taking in the spirit of god and what god think and how, how god feels that should be what you should be doing continually in your life discarding your own agenda your own feelings your Amen. own thoughts and taking on what God is. That's why when you read the scripture, you have to just read and believe what it's saying. Understand what it's saying and then believe it. And that's simple, just it. And whatever it says, that's true. And whatever you thought about it is discarded. You know what I mean? That's that's how you keep your relationship with God simple. But anyway, uh, you know, a lot of times people look at the commandment of God and they look at it from different perspectives. You know what I mean? So somebody may look at God and they may say God is... God is like they have different reasons why they feel like you should obey God well you should obey God because you want God to bless you you should obey God because like he'll kill you you should obey God because and I mean all those things have they're, they're true <laughs> all of this stuff. but but it's just the, it's just the, the the focus and the emphasis that's put on it you see what I'm saying may be a little unweighted it all depends you know what I mean? God is love. You know what I mean? You want to just keep, because, you know, God, you know, you do your best to keep his commandments. You know what I mean? But God is love, and he just he just wants to have a relationship with you. That's just what he, he wants. You know what I mean? Commandments, you know, the commandments and instructions are one thing, but just all God really, really wants is that you just to love him. You know what I mean? But they separate the commandments and the love. It's, the love is more an emotional thing and not necessarily an obedience thing, which is which is all. You know, and, and I can go down the list. There's many things that all people have their different like viewpoints on how they view God but from this scripture it gives a clear understanding to me from God's perspective why he wants you to keep his commandments you see what I'm saying he's saying that it may be well within your children forever like cause 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 also in the unity of Job like your righteousness you you obeying don't do nothing for God like it doesn't add anything to God for you to do right you see what I'm saying like God is gonna be God regardless like point blank period like there is no there is no touching that statement God is here and that's where he's going to stay at regardless to what we do. Whether we do right or wrong, evil, we have evil hearts, whatever, misunderstandings, whatever. God is going to be God regardless. You see what I'm saying? So then you ask yourself, then why is it, why is that God care if we do right? Why is that God care if we keep the commandments? You know what I mean? And like, to me, this is the answer to that. He says, man, if, if, if you just had to understand, God said that you just keep my command, fear me and keep my commandments forever, that it may be well with you. Because ultimately, if you do what I tell you, if you keep the commandments, your life is better as a result. And that's simple. I mean, and to me, that's soon, the first time I read through it, it stuck to me because I'm like, okay, if you do right, then your life will be better. You'll be blessed by it. Now, of course, persecution comes from doing right. That's what it is. But you're going to have persecution regardless. You see what I'm saying? You're going to have trouble in life. Whether you the best cat or the worst, Jesus had trouble. So yes. it's like being righteous don't mean you eliminate yourself from trouble. But it's going to make your life as simple and as pleasant, I mean, as as easy as possible. If you just do, it'll make your life well. It'll make things in your life better. It'll make your life simple if you just keep God's commandments. And that's what he's saying, man. If there was such a heart in you, that you would just do what I'm telling you to do. And like it's like, now that I have children, I really understand it. Because like... I'm trying to tell you these things because I've been alive for a little while and I done seen some things. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, man, listen, man, how you how you operating is not good. This is what's gonna happen with the situation, how you plan the situation. And like because they where they at in their world, you see what I'm saying, from their vantage point, like, man, that ain't gonna work, homie. 
<laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. It's all kind of this stuff going on out here in the streets. <laughs> I'm like, man, I understand. I used to be around that. You know I mean? <laughs> but it's like, man, just li- if you just listen, and you see them go through it, and then they catch, whoa, slip and slide, and fall, and hit their chin on the ground. So it's like, dude. And it's like, I care about you. I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, listen, your life is yours. I say, you live it. I say, and, and whatever you decide to do, you got to face the consequence of that. Now, we are affected from peripheral because we see you suffering. That's not tight. That's not tight. But we're going we to live, though. Whatever decisions you make, like, you're going to have to deal with those situations. But we're not going to suffer with you. Like, you're going to have to suffer by yourself. Now, we may be like, oh, man, one tear. And then we're going to eat chicken. We're going to go travel. We're going to do whatever we're going to do because we live in our lives. You see what I'm saying? So we're not going to live in a cesspool with you if you make bad decisions. You and your family are going to have to suffer by yourself. And I'm already, I'm telling you now, we're going to be happy. We're going to live. You know what I mean? But it's like you watch them scramble around. It's like if you would just listen to me. Just listen. Because I'm trying to tell you because I care about you. It ain't because... I, I'm gonna get some glory out of it. I'm gonna win. It's about I just want to see you win. I just want to see you happy. I just want to see your life best. You know what I mean? And that's that's exactly what this scripture is dealing with. Oh, if there was such a heart in them that they would they would fear me and keep my commandments always. You know what I mean that it made me well with you and your children forever. That's that's God's that's God's motive. That's His heart. And it's His His desire and His expression and His reason given to you why you should just listen, fear, respect. Cause it's for your benefit. I'm trying to help you, man. Come on. That's 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 the mentality. And so that's simple. And if you can understand that, like all the commandments that God has given us in the scriptures, it's for your benefit. It's for your good. And for you to teach your children, that may be well with them also. You see what I'm saying? And so you don't have to look at the righteousness as some shackle around your neck that you gotta like be bound to, even though you're slaves to righteousness, in the sense of because you gotta do it. But you don't have to look at that as a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because ultimately, all these instructions, that's why you have to try so hard to learn them. So because ultimately, any instruction that God give you, it's for your benefit. Yes. It's for your good. And not just because God said it, but because God created life. God created the, the system of life that we have now. And if you just listen to what he's telling you, your life will be well. You can eliminate a lot of foolishness and a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble in life by simply just doing what's right. You know what I mean? Like one of the big things, and we're going to wrap this thing up real quick. One of the big things in life is like fornication, lasciviousness, lust, blah, 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 blah. It's everywhere, and it's like it's just all encompassing in the world. We live into that. You know what I mean? Cats have, like the concept of like like not having sex with marriage is like so far away from cats' minds. It's like that ain't even in the realm of possibility. Like ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> That's what people think. Like ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, even that instruction, you may think it's natural for a man to want a woman, or for a woman to want a man, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's a natural thing. So why would you tell a person that they can't if it's natural, the thought process that some might have? But God says, no, don't do it until you get married. You get married, then you commune with this person, blah, 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 blah. You know? And to, but, to, but to a regular man in his mind, or a woman, or whatever, a human being, that don't make no sense. Because people... You go through puberty at 13, 14 years old, and you start feeling the type of way. And it's like, yo, man, this cat willing, I'm willing. What's the problem, man? We, we on the same page. Yeah. But even with that, like, and this is just a, this is a simple, this is a simple concept. You know what I mean? Like, if you just listen here, it makes sense. Like, if you, you know, communion between a man and a woman in a physical way is... You know, part of it is pleasure, but other part of it is procreation. You see what I'm saying? Like, hey man, having babies and stuff like that. Like, when you having children with multiple people, we're not animals. You see what I'm saying? Like, cats, you got three, four children, and not just a simple kind of. Not that every situation works this way. I'm just this is an example that complicates life quite a bit. If you got kids with multiple people. Then everybody got a cat's going to have a say in this and that, and it's it's just a it's a big to do and a big mess that can be avoided if a man and a woman get married and have they have sex just between themselves. You ain't got to worry about all that all the other all the other craziness if you have one woman and one man having children together. That's biologically like how it's supposed to work. You know what I mean? Uh, illnesses, diseases, 
Like, hey man, if you ain't done nothing with nobody before, and she ain't done nothing with nobody before, then you know, and long long as cats ain't walking into a relationship with no illnesses, then hey, y'all together and y'all just stay together, then shouldn't be no issues. Mm-hmm. When a cat's been jumping in and out of bed, <laughs> <laughs> and then cat, you know, hit 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 boom bang boom boom boom, that cat's ooh, losing weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't gotta worry about that. If you just say a man and a woman get married and they that's how it is. One mm-hmm. one 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 row, one people together for life. Like you ain't gotta worry about all that other stuff. You see what I'm saying? And that's just two simple examples. And yeah, I understand like, but what about protect blah blah blah? And I ain't talking about all of that. I'm talking about if that if you just keep my commandments, it make your life a whole lot easier. It make your life a whole lot simpler. Mm-hmm. If you just follow the instruction that God gave you, God don't get nothing out of the fact that you didn't you stayed celibate until you got married. Like God don't 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 God don't hear you know I me. Mean? Like it don't make God like give God power if you like more strength if you like do right or wrong. Like God gonna be God regardless. God gonna judge you based on what you did because I gave you instruction. I made you so you know it's also beneficial for you to have me in your corner. I mean, if you do what's right, then I can I can bless you, and you can have a relationship together. That's also a great benefit to you. But just physically, if you just do what I tell you to do, your life is better as a result. Your life is simpler. It's easier. Less stress. Like you gonna have stress in life, but you add stress to your life when you do stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's it's that it's that that's a simple thing. But if you understand that concept with everything else that God has told you, everything, every instruction, every commandment that God has given you, it's for your benefit. To simplify your life, to make your life easier and to deal with and better. So, cause, cause life don't have to be so stressful. Life don't have to be where you pulling your hair out and you just can't sleep at night. You gotta take medicine. Your life ain't, don't ain't supposed to be like. It don't have to be like that. You gonna have trouble. That's just natural living on the earth. But you complicate things when you don't follow the instructions of God. I always say, I'm coming your way, sister. This is gonna be the final, final point. I always say God is the ancient of days. I says, he, we, we tell our children, I always use an example for myself. I've been around long than you. I've seen things and, and, and it's legit though. You know what I mean? Like I, I've seen how life, the course of life goes. You go to school, you know what I mean? You in school and uh, you got the most popular cats and like, man, it's like he's, his life is golden. And my life is trash or whatever. All the girls like him. He's so cool. You know what I mean? And like, man, he got cool leather jackets and cool shoes. You know what I mean? And like, and like that's your world. And like, cool leather jackets and shoes is everything in the world that you live in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but as you all get older and you start seeing them same cats, you know, get out of school and then getting involved with some stuff. And then about 10 years afterwards, a 10 year reunion, same jacket, got holes in it though. Shoes a little raggedy. <laughs> I mean, the muscles used to have, then you know, you know, getting kind of counting. Yeah, he been, he was at that party, and now the six pack he got is the six pack that he empty cans in the back of his truck. <laughs> That's all the thing he got. <laughs> no, but you see, uh, uh, you know, and you see how life progresses. You know, I mean, you've gotten past that point of school, and you see how living that life, the effects of it over time, the lack of wisdom in it. So then you tell your kids, hey man, listen, that's not where it's at, man. Don't worry about that. Cause life go like long that that same kid you think that's so cool, you trying to be like, he gonna be like this when he get, cause you saw it. Cause you lived it. And the older you get, the more you see this person that was that when he in his 30s was pushing so hard to get these businesses and blah 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 blah. Now he's 57 and he ain't he ain't cute no more. And like all that he's he alone. He got money, but he alone now. Cause he, he worked so hard for that money. But he pushed everybody else in his life away. So you'll tell your 30 year old son, hey man, listen, slow down, man. You wanna make sure that you wanna hold on and have something after you make this success, you have something to share it with or somebody to share it with. You know what I mean? You turn 80 years old, you remember the cat that was 57, that was finna retire and all that kind of stuff. Now you 80 and you starting to get a little old or whatever. And you say, hey man, listen, man, make sure, you know, you take care of your finances when you come out of retirement, you put some stuff together. Cause you start getting older and stuff start running out. Make sure you have a plan, cause you don't want to run out of money. You get old. because you've been around, you've seen it. You follow what I'm saying? And so, and, and so, God is older than all of us. Amen. He been from the from the beginning. Mm-hmm. He's seen life from the moment it started until this very point, and we'll be there until He decides to change it up 
wipe the table, and then we're going to go into eternity. So God is giving you instructions because I've seen it all. I know how this thing plays. I'm telling you, man, listen, you can caught up in this, that, and the third, but this is what life really is for a human being that I made. This is what life is. These are commandments I'm telling you. This is what you need to do in order to live a well life while you're alive and be pleasing to me and make it to heaven and eternity because that's what's coming it's regardless. You know what I mean? So the same concept we have when we say, man, listen to me, man. I'm trying to tell you because I care about you. You know what I mean? Like I I've seen it. I know how this thing play out. I'm just take heed to what I'm telling you because you're going to wish you hurt. You know what I mean? Because I care about you. God is the oldest of us all. He's telling you, I've seen these things. I know how this thing play. Follow these instructions, and man, your life will be good. Mm -hmm. So just like you want your kids to say, man, trust me, because I care about you. Ain't nobody going to care about you like your mama, right. as you tell people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen, I'm your father, man. Like, your boy don't care. Like, I care about you. I've seen you since you was in stride rights. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you were wearing Jordans and all the other little kicks. You know what I mean? Like, I care about you, man. I've seen you. You know what I mean? And that's real. Like, your friends, they come. You may, Y'all may lose time, but I'm always going to be your dad. I'm always going to care about you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, so I'm telling you this because I, I want to see you happy. So remember that feeling, that thought, and then bring that to God. God is telling us, listen, man, I'm telling you this because I care about you. And that's why he says, I love God because he hears my prayers, my supplications. Because he hears me. He care about me. And that's simple. So make sure that you have that same mentality, man. God, all the instruction that God has given us, the, the discipline that he give us, the admonishment that he give us, all the, the warnings that he give us, all the examples he give us in the scriptures, it's because he care about you. Right. Not only as a human being as a whole, but as an individual, he care about you. When you're in trouble, he, you can call on him, he hear you. Just like your kid call him, um, I'm over here. I broke down over here. It's, you know, it's dark. Blah, blah, blah. You can be in the bed. You be like, all right, where you at? Okay, we got to go get so-and-so. Because you care about them. You see what I'm saying? If, if he be like, well, it was late, so I just slept in my car up under this bridge over here, you know, in the storm. You'd be like, why in the world did you not? Like, what? You call me. Don't ever sit there. Don't ever do no situation. You call me because I love you. It's the same concept, man. God, God care about you. There's no situation so big. And you can't call God. He don't you know, say, man, what you got? This you need to do. Oh, I'm on my way. This is because, because, and so, and you say, and if you have parents like that, and I'm done. Final point, sister, you got your thought? I know I went over. I'm sorry. I'm done. You know what? Say that, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay, brother. Uh, you know, we can't, by, by what we do, you say we don't add anything to God. God going to be God regardless of what we do and what we don't do. So by you saying that we do what we don't do things, we're not going to add to God, but can we take this thought that we're doing these things to please him? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going to add to him, but we're doing it within the please him to make us feel that we're doing something. Amen. You Amen. Know? Amen. Amen. So that, that, but see, that goes back to sincerity. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, honestly and truthfully, like, like, okay, you and you in school, you make good grades. That don't like give your parents a bonus. Your kids don't, your parents don't, you don't add anything to your parents as far as physically, or they don't gain anything because you made a good, great, good A in English. You see what I'm saying? But you say, man, I want to do good because I want my, my mom and dad to be happy. Man, yeah, that's dope. You bring that with, hey, I did this. Great job, my son. Great job, my dog. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I mean by that. You make God proud. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. God can be made proud. God can say, this is my servant who I'm well pleased. That's what it is. That's what it was with Job. Have you considered Job? Ain't nobody like him in the earth. That's God's report of Job. You know what I mean? And so when we do right, we, we honor God. We bring glory to God when we do what's right. So, I, 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 man, I'm glad I think you brought that up because I don't want it to be like, like that. Like, it don't affect God at all. Like that, in the sense of God is going to be God whether we do right or wrong, you know what I'm saying? But when we do well, God is going to be glorified. And he expects us to do well so that he will be glorified. Not because he needs it. Because like, I like, I'm like in the corner, like, somebody look at me. But because it's for other people's benefit to understand how good I am. So they can be benefited also. So they can believe. And I can have a relationship with them and bless them. That's what it is. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, that definitely, that's the absolute right mentality you should have. I want to do right because I want to make God happy. But that goes back to loving God. Like, if I love God, then I, I want to make God happy. I want to make him proud. 
I want him to look at me and be like, he's a good son. He's a, she's a good daughter. I mean, that's what it is. You give, you make him happy. And absolutely, by our righteousness and we, our submission and our doing what is right, we make God happy. So that's the lesson. Uh, I don't know if I have any final points or thoughts. Uh, keep it simple, saints. Like I said, man, like, don't, you know, don't complicate. Don't add all this extra stuff, man. It's a simple thing. Just keep God's commandments and, like, because God care about you. And you, and you care about God. And just like you may love your parents, you love somebody else, anybody that you love in the world, you say, man, I love them. I'm down, but that's my guy. That's my friend. That's my girl. Whatever. And that simple love that you have for them is just like, I just like them, man. They cool people. Like, they, they understand me. They get me. I mean, like, we click. And we have a good time together. And I just like being around them. And it's just thinking about them make me smile. And it's a cool thing. And it, it ain't got to be no because they bought me this or they gave me it. It's simply because, like, we cool people. <laughs> it's a simple thing. And the same thing should be with God. No matter how great, I mean, the great things that God has done, how marvelous his works are, your relationship with God should be simple like that. Like, man, I just love God because he care about me, man. He, like, he helps me. Like, when I'm in trouble, he, he hear me. Like, he tell me, like, he, his instructions are good to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's a simple thing. So love God. You know what I mean? And God will love you and y'all have a relationship together. 